Hey everyone, firstly apologies for the sort of weird lighting behind me. I'm in a hotel in London uh, that doesn't have any outside windows. Um, I'll be back at home uh, tomorrow, so uh, back in my studio. Um, there's also a really annoying uh, fan going on my computer. I think it's trying to emulate the wind. So uh, again, apologies for that noise, but uh, <laughs> there's not really much I can do. Um, what I can do is talk about the race, and uh, it's certainly been just incredible few days since the start. So we're only in day four, and so much has happened. So as the fleet looked across that really tricky front, we've had dismastings, we've had capsizes, we've had sail damage, uh, we see boats recording. They're really, really difficult, gusty conditions. And uh, and it's just, you know, it's really brought this race home to everyone, just how difficult and dangerous it can be. But it's also been an incredible match race at the front with uh, the all teams, Francois Gabbard's SVR trading jibe for jibe with Charles Cordrelier's um, Edmund de Rothschild. Uh, who'd have thought that those two giants would be slugging it out in the way that they are across the uh, across the Atlantic? And of course, you know, the all teams have managed to get uh, ahead of this um, this high pressure is always high, so they're now sort of in the trades, going speeds of thirty to thirty five knots. And, uh, and don't blink because in a moment this race is going to be over. In the Amoka class, we've seen Charlie Dallin stretch ahead and, uh, and then hit the buffers. He's just coming into that high pressure. And of course, that is going to ensnare him uh, and allow the chasing pack to get right back up to his, uh, his stern. Um, it's going to be a really tricky crossing for all of the Amokas to get through this high pressure. So, um, yeah, don't expect uh, any great speeds over the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. And of course, in the class 40s, we've just seen the two sort of favourites, really, um, climbing back up the pack uh, with Paprek, Akria, Johan Risham and, uh, and Sneff, uh, Xavier McCabe, really climbing up through the ranks. They started this race as pre-race favourites and uh, they're already in second and third place. Um, few would bet that they're not going to really look to, to put their stamp on this race now they're back in the game. So let's have a look at the race tracker. Okay, so uh, we're here with the all teams and uh, and you can see on the race tracker the uh, the high pressure, the light wind high pressure, the Zor's high just to the north of their track and they've managed to cross that front they've worked their way around that high pressure system and now they're into some really decent trade winds uh, and you know look for you know some jibes as they're making their way to guadeloupe uh, there's uh, there's a sort of i think 50 mile 60 mile difference between gitana and uh, and and francois gabard's svr um but he'll he's going to keep the pressure on i'm sure and uh, and so Devo is not that far behind either, slightly different uh, trajectory. And so expect these three boats to uh, to really be pushing hard, hoping for a, an opportunity, hoping for maybe a breakage um, on the leader. But at the moment, you know, he's going fast, he's going in the right direction. And it, there's, a, there's a very good chance he's going to hold on and, and win this incredible race. Okay, so if we quickly look at the Amoka class, and you can see it's a very different situation. Uh, there's Charlie Dallin uh, on a Pivia. He's uh, he's now speeds reduced to 14 knots. He's slowing down. You can see the light pressure winds ahead of him, and uh, and this this high pressure ridge is really going to take hold in the next uh, 24 hours, um, which is going to allow all of the fleets to uh, to sort of you know come back on their elastic bungee back into him. Uh, it's not to say that he's going to stop at the moment, um, but it is going to be quite tricky to get through this and, uh, and, and eventually the whole fleet are, are going to struggle to get across this bridge. Whoever gets out first is probably going to get away again. So um, it's like a mini doldrums, uh, but really the next 24, 48 hours are going to be really quite tricky uh, for this fleet. And let's, uh, let's quickly have a look at the class 40s. Okay, so with the class 40s, uh, different situation, they're north of the Azores, 
they're still quite affected by this uh, this deep depression, this low pressure, uh, and another you know front trailing across that they've got to get across. So you can see at the moment they're heading in a northwesterly direction. Um, they're looking to get across this front and then get into that uh, northwesterly wind behind there. Um, but routing, we'll have a look at the routing in a minute. They've got the Azores high still to cross. Uh, they're going to be upwind for a few more days, it seems. Uh, and then they've got this tricky high pressure ridge and high pressure Azores to get across. So uh, no no records to be broken, I don't think, with the class 40s. Um, and certainly with the Amokas, they're going to be slow. So I think they're going to be outside of the record time. Uh, but uh, a lot to play for, and, uh, and these fleets are super close uh, and, and, and got some, some really difficult sailing ahead. So uh, it's going to be a fascinating week ahead. Okay, so I've we'll a quick look at the routing here. This is for avoiding a mocker, uh, and you can see this uh, from the position of Charlie Dallin. We just get slowed up by this high pressure. Um, it's really, really sort of almost centered near the boats. Uh, very, very light winds across across it. They're just going to be having to sort of inch their way across the fleet, across the uh, the ridge here, right through the centre by the looks of things, and then get down on the southern side um, of this high pressure system and into the trade winds. But looking at this, you know, it's going to be a really, really tricky sort of few days. Um, and uh, you know, anyone who gets a bit of a breakthrough here might get away. So. No, it's definitely not over at this stage. Okay, so we're here with the class 40 and uh, their, their routing is right in the top right hand side of your screen. Uh, they've got to get through the Azores high, they're still going to be upwind um, initially till they get to the Azores uh, and still quite breezy, you know, 15 to 20 knots. But uh, then once that front go, go moves away, they should be into some quite fast sailing sort of north, northerly airstream, uh, but you can see the, the, the soft light winds ahead of them uh, and they've got to get across that that sort of bubble of, of light winds, which is looking like, again, like a mini doldrums to cross. Uh, once south of there, they may well be uh, away in the trade winds again, but um, yeah, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a very, very difficult few days. So that's it from me. It's not been easy up here in London in the hotel just to try and bring you this update. But uh, hopefully you've got the gist of uh, what's going on. And uh, I'll be back at home in the in our studio. So looking forward to seeing how the next 24 hours pans out. Have a great one. Cheers. Bye-bye.